Italy, pizza, France, baguette, and then Germany, brutal, dangerous, genocide-committing Nazis. Wait, what? Hey Rabbits, it's Trixie, and today I want to tackle the odd-sounding question, why is everyone obsessed with Germans? So let me explain what I mean by that. When I started making YouTube videos again back in 2015, I did a lot of different things, trying to find my own direction, my own concept. Comedy, vlogs, beauty, DIY, I don't know, who am I? And all of these videos ended up getting pretty much the same amount of views. Not bad for a beginner channel, but also nothing to make a big leap with. But then, since I'm German and my boyfriend is from Venezuela, we randomly decided to make a video about our cultural differences called what are Germans like? And boom! Until today, this video is on rank 4 of my videos with the highest view count. This means to me that I kinda hit a nerve. I tried a bunch of other topics, no one watched them, so I figured let's just go back to Germany and the German language and boom! How to do a German accent. By far the most successful video on my whole channel. Since then many videos followed. I continue doing this kind of content and I'm honestly very happy with what kind of concept I ended up with. Languages, culture, society, Germany and the German language, that's awesome. But there was always this question in my head and the question was why? Why are so many people interested in the German culture and the German language? And it's not only interest, it's almost something like a hype or an obsession that many other people seem to have with Japan, for example. I bet you also have a friend like that who goes to cosplay conventions, dyes his hair green or blue, reads manga, watches anime. Nothing bad about that, not at all. I'm also fascinated by Japan's culture, but I'm not digging it in the same way that these people do, you know? And even though the obsession with Germany is not as strong or as obvious as the obsession with Japan that many people have, I think that Germany also has a huge fan base in this world, at least compared to its size, or let's say there is some sort of intense curiosity about Germans going on. Based on my own experiences, I would say that the curiosity for Germany, Germans and the German language is over average. Or let me put it that way, there may be another YouTuber making an amazing channel about the Ukraine. Sorry Ukraine, it's nothing personal. My hypothesis is that this channel would surely attract some people being particularly interested in the Ukraine, but the video wouldn't be hyped that much. Not as much as videos about Germany would be. I mean, I know many YouTubers coming from America, the UK, France, Norway, Sweden, and they could easily make videos on the quirks of their own native languages. But even their most successful videos are the German or Germany related ones. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I also made videos on the Spanish accent or comparing the different English accents and people didn't give a shit. Could be my mistake though, but it's a bit weird, isn't it? So yeah, I know what you may be thinking. Trixie, I've watched so many of your videos and there are only Germans writing comments. There is no international hype about Germans. Germans simply want to know what kind of lies you are telling about them. So if there is an obsession, then it's Germans being obsessed with themselves. But to that I have to say, wrong. Of course, one part of my community is German, but it's not the majority. So there must be something else driving people from all over the world to my channel. Well, then it's your boobs. <sighs> Alright, so here are the possible reasons that I could come up with to explain why everyone is so obsessed with Germany, the Germans and the German language. First of all, one of the main aspects must be all of the very popular cliches about Germans. Of course, with the Nazi stereotype leading the way. Nazis is like the very first thing many non-Germans connect with our people. Which is very sad, but this is not the time to brag about stereotypes, so if you are interested in this topic, please watch this video that I made some time ago. So yeah, not only is the Nazi thing a very persistent and universal stereotypes about the Germans, it's also one of the most devastating and shocking. I mean, what other stupid stereotypes are there about other countries? Italy, pizza, France, baguette, Mexico, sombreros and moustaches that look like clothes hangers with hair. Ho, 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 taco, queso, tortilla. Was that a bit racist? I'm sorry. And then Germany, brutal, dangerous, genocide-committing Nazis. 
Wait, what? I know, or let's say I hope that many people are aware that this is a heavy burden from the past and that this stereotype doesn't apply to us anymore, like not at all. But even though hopefully many people know that, there is no equally popular cliche alternative for what to think about us Germans, so they are confronted with it anyway. And given this situation, it's not a surprise that many foreigners are like, this Nazi stuff is obviously stupid. I hope. So what are Germans really like? It's like this Nazi thing casts a shadow over everything else that would be typical for Germans. And shadows are always a mysterious thing, so people get curious. Of course other stereotypes about the Germans exist, but as I said, they are not as popular. And here's another significant point. They are also really diverse and sometimes contradictory, which makes the Germans even more of a mystery. See, on one side you have the Nazi cliché, the cliché about Germans being angry and depressed and reserved and always trying to be efficient, working like machines. On the other side you have Lederhosen and Dirndls and the Oktoberfest, beer, sausages, potatoes and sauerkraut. In general, the picture of cute, earthy people with lovely traditions. How does this fit together? It's no surprise that foreigners want to know who we really are, because they are left with so many confusing half-truths and question marks in their heads. Now, normally I would say, well, just listen to what the French, Italian, Spanish, German people say about themselves, but here's another thing. Compared to many, many other countries, Germany is kinda shy or let's say intimidated for various reasons to show national pride or to mention what's typically German. For example, apart from periods of time where football championships take place, you will not see the German flag very often. And whenever a German says, I'm proud to be a German, I feel like there's always a spotlight turned onto him right away, both by other Germans and the whole world. Hmm, so what are you gonna say now? You're proud to be a German? Does that mean you're a Nazi? Does that mean you're against all of the refugees coming to Germany? Or it's simply curiosity. What are you proud of? What does it mean to be German? If a Portuguese says, oh, I'm proud to be Portuguese, then no one bats an eye about it. But if a German says, I'm proud to be a German, Sometimes an avalanche of delicate questions, political discussions and uncomfortable accusations breaks loose. So even though Germans know about all of these bullshit stereotypes, it's difficult for us to debunk them and to state our own opinion. Because to do so, we need to drag this information through a swamp of media, politics, history-related dirt. Which is why we are pretty much stuck with all these stupid cliches. Ironically, something else that makes fighting these stereotypes even more complicated is that in my point of view, at least one of them is partially true. Many Germans, not all of them of course, but definitely me and my family included, are pretty much kept to themselves. If something bothers us, we usually don't talk about it right away. Sometimes we wait for a really long time before we share our sorrows and, for example, seek help concerning a mental disease. We put a lot of thought into things before we say them out loud to make sure they are not rubbish. To me, Germans are like this one quiet kid in class that almost never says anything. But when it does, it's always something clever, creative, that makes you wonder what it looks like inside of his head. Again, causing it to be mysterious and the other kids to be curious, but it also makes the quiet kid an easy target. So the delicacy of showing national pride, the thoughtfulness of the Germans and the legitimate fear of saying something wrong is a toxic combination here to make a change. But let's talk about my next thought now, which targets the German language. I already mentioned that the stereotypes about Germans are tremendously confusing. And it's almost the same thing with our language. German seems to be pretty unique and interesting to many people. It's claimed to be aggressive sounding and edgy, like Germans would always scream even though they talk about unicorns and butterflies. And what makes it so special is that there's nothing like German. Germany is close to Scandinavia, but German doesn't sound like Swedish. It's also close to Poland, but German doesn't sound like Polish either. Close to France, but German doesn't sound like… you get the point. There are so many negative things said about the German language, but also tons of lovely things. Ten beautiful German words that no other language has. Lists of the cutest German words. German words that have funny literal translations in English. Super long German words. There are so many secrets and extremes to be surprised about. And of course, there are many lovers of the German literature in general. And you know, all of this being connected to Germans who are a mystery themselves makes Germany even more of an attraction. Like, do you know asterisks? Sometimes I feel like the Germans are seen as the Gauls, die Gallia. 
You know those lovely people who live in that village, resisting the Romans, this powerful force. But still, they are indomitable and they have this magic potion granting them superpowers. It may be far-fetched, but all this fuss about the Germans reminds me a bit of that. The lederhosen and journals, the traditions, the music and lots of food versus the dark side. The media portraying us as either Nazis, evil villains or genius scientists, definitely people you should fear or at least respect. You know what I mean is that the stereotypes about the Germans are so weird that they seem almost cartoony to me, which is why I came up with Asterix in the first place, I guess. It's not real. It's a caricature of a caricature, which makes the Germans seem funny and odd and maybe even a bit scary to others. Lastly, it is simply very difficult to ignore the Germans. Our past is part of history lessons all over the world. Germany can impossibly be left out when you speak about the First or Second World War. So no matter where you live, you get in touch with our history. And I'm not only talking about the bad things. Same as today's stereotypes about the Germans and same as our language, our past is diverse too. I guess that's pretty much the same for every nation, but still. You cannot say the Germans are good or the Germans are evil. In our history, there's always this counterbalance for both sides of the spectrum, making you feel torn again about the Germans after you just made up your mind. And of course, it's not only our past. Up until today, Germany plays a big role in our world, be it economy-related, related to global flashpoints such as the refugees or the European debt crisis, education, scientific breakthroughs, popular brands, music, entertainment. Compared to the size of our country, our influence on all of these different sectors is pretty impressive. Surely, again, there are good things and there are bad things, but what I want to say is that Germans are kinda everywhere. So, all right, I'm, I'm almost done. Let me just quickly sum this all up for you. Why is everyone obsessed with the Germans? Well, firstly, because of our past that is present in history lessons all over the world and that left us stuck with an extreme stereotype. Germans, Nazis. Asking about Germans, that may be the first thing you're confronted with. Alongside other minor stereotypes portraying the Germans as cute lederhosen wearing lovers of good food and lovely traditions. It couldn't be more contradictory, so that's definitely mysterious. Then there's our inhibited national pride. The few statements that Germans make about themselves and, of course, our language that seems to be a love it or hate it kind of thing very unique and special, lots of secrets to discover. All of that wouldn't matter if Germany were a country that you barely hear of, but no! Germans are in the media all the time, taking part and raising their voice in big political, economical, educational and overall groundbreaking events. Germans are as popular as they are mysterious. And that's my opinion why there is such curiosity, such a hype or obsession about us. All right, Babbitts, what do you say? Am I right with the points that I raised? Have you also sensed this obsession with Germans or am I crazy? What other reasons can you think of that explain why Germans are so interesting to other nations? Do you also like Germany, the Germans or the German language? Would you speak of some sort of obsession that you have? Are you also curious about Germany, the Germans and the German language? And why is that? What fascinates you the most about it? I really, really hope that you liked today's video. If so, please leave a thumbs up because that would make me really, really happy. If you want to watch another video of Don't Trust the Rabbit, you can find one right here. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook or even support the channel on Patreon, which would mean so, so much to me. Now, after watching this super long video, I'm very sorry about that. The next ones are going to be shorter again. I wish you all a very beautiful day. Check out my other videos if you'd like to and hopefully we are going to see each other in my next video. Bye!